Greetings everyone. I am Shashanki and today I'm going to talk about difference between US and Indian federalism. We welcome you to Law Minds YouTube channel to explore such beautiful topics and understand the legal aspect behind them. Before we dive into the difference between the two, let us understand what is federalism. Federalism is a system of government in which power is shared between a central government and a regional governments. The US and India are both federal countries but they have different ways of dividing power between the national and state levels. Now if you want to explain this in a layman's language it could be said that it turns down to division of power. Now division of power between who? Between the national government, national government and the state government. Now this can be done or a primary example of this would be municipalities, panchayats or the state governments that are uh, playing a huge role in the development in India itself. Now let us look into the differences as to where US and India stand on the terms of federalism. We would be analyzing it on various grounds. So the first one being constitutional framework. Let us dive into it. The division of power in the US, the constitution clearly states and defines the powers that are given to the federal government and the powers that are reserved for the states. The 10th amendment of the constitution states that the power not delegated to United States by the constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. This means that the states have broad powers to govern themselves as long as they don't violate the constitution itself. If we talk about India, the division of power between central and state government is done in a three-fold distribution of legislative powers between the union and the state government. There are three different lists known as union list, state list and concurrent list. The union list talks about subjects of national importance such as defense of the country, foreign affairs, banking, communication, currency etc. The central government alone can make decisions on these matters. The aim of including these matters in the union list is to ensure uniformity in the policy of these areas throughout the country. The second list being state list. It contains subjects of state and local importance such as police, trade, commerce, agriculture. The state government alone can make laws and decisions on these areas. The third list is concurrent list. It includes those topics which are of common interest to both the center as well as the state government. It includes matters such as education, forest, marriage and trade unions. But both the state and the central government can make decisions in these matters. This topic shall be the judicial branch. As mentioned that the United States Supreme Court is the highest court in the land with the power of judicial review. The Indian Supreme Court also has the power of judicial review, but it is not explicitly stated in the constitution. The Indian Supreme Court also has the power to interpret the constitution. Now the Supreme Court of United States is the final arbiter of the constitution. This means that the Supreme Court can strike down laws passed by the Congress or the states if they believe that the laws violate the Constitution. The Indian Supreme Court also has the power to strike down laws, but it does not have the same level of authority as US Supreme Court. The Indian Constitution and the Indian Supreme Court can only strike down laws that violate the Constitution. Why? Because the Supreme Court is called the final interpreter of the constitution itself. It derives its powers from the constitution itself. So the Supreme Court can only strike down laws that violate the constitution or the fundamental rights that are guaranteed by the constitution. Next ahead, we have the relationship between the national and the state government. In the United States, the national and the state government are generally seen as co-equal partners. This means that neither level of government has more power than the other. The national and the state government often work together to solve problems in the United States. Whereas in India, the national government is generally seen as having more power than the state government. This is because the Indian constitution gives the national government more power than the state.
the national government is more likely to take the lead on important topics that require solidarity throughout the country such as we have already discussed the three lists right union list state list and list and concurrent list in the union list there were topics that were of utmost importance such as the security of the country foreign exchange and these are topics that have to be same or have to be governed in the same manner throughout the country hence the national government takes the lead on such important topics next ahead we have the legislative branch the united states congress is a bicameral legislature consisting of the house of representatives and the senate the indian parliament is also bicameral and it consists of the lok sabha and the rajya sabha we are both aware that the lok sabha and the rajya sabha are the two houses of the indian indian parliament but the lok sabha holds more power why because it passes the money bill next ahead we have executive branch the united states president is both the head of the state and the head of the government whereas in india the indian president is called the head of the state while the prime minister is the head of the government the indian prime minister is appointed by the president while the united states president is elected by the people themselves then we have some additional inf- information that we should keep in mind while we are comparing the two countries on the basis of federalism first one being the size of the countries the us is a much larger country than india both in terms of land area and population this means that the national government in the united states has a much larger bureaucracy than the national government in india secondly the history of the countries the us has a much longer history of federalism than india This means that the system of federalism in the US is more established and more stable than the Indian system of federalism. Third one being the culture of the countries. The US and the India have two different very two very different cultures. This can be this can lead to different attitudes towards federalism in the two countries. Hence these points are to be kept in mind while we are comparing the two on the basis of federalism. Next ahead we reach the conclusion these these are just a few key differences between us and indian federalism federalism is a complex system of government and there is no one size fit for all approach the us and india have different ways of dividing power between the national and the state levels and these differences reflect the historical cultural and political context of the two countries thank you for watching i hope you found this video informative and if you have any questions please leave a comment below and be sure to subscribe to law minds youtube channel for more such videos thank you